Industries affect both our lives and our planet. In particular, the fashion industry has a significant impact on our environment. That's why we invited two sustainable fashion entrepreneurs to discuss how we can reduce the impacts of the clothes we buy. Nina Gibor founded EcoStyles to promote a holistic approach to sustainable fashion, while Sanjana Swarup made EcoDaga to provide a second life for clothes which would otherwise clog landfills. After their presentations, they kindly took questions from the audience. Before we start the Q&A session, I'd like to thank our speakers again for sharing their valuable knowledge and experience with us. And I always say that with step by step and drop by drop, we'll certainly make a big change for our thrivable future. With that being said, uh, we move on to the first question, which is open to our speakers. I was just reading through an article and it said that according to an estimate, around 200 billion clothes are sold every year and on an average only one seven times. So before they get discarded. and out of the, what has been discarded, less than 1% get that recycled. So what do you think can be done to improve this turnaround? From my perspective, I think that we need to invest heavily in recycling. So everything from increased infrastructure for existing recycling models um, through to where there are no quote unquote solutions for recycling specific materials. I think we need to invest in research and development um, to create recycling systems of, of complicated um, textile blends, for instance. Um, I think that we have a tendency whenever we don't have, we, whenever we don't have a, a solution for something, we say just throw our hands up in the air and say, well, there's no solution. So let's just keep consuming. We just keep putting it in landfill. No, we need to, we're creating the waste. We need to be responsible, right? So, you know, with, with the billions of dollars, I think the, the fashion industry is worth, I think, is it $1.8, $1 $1.9 trillion? That's a lot of money we can use into investing in solutions. Um, for the materials that are being used and sold and profited from. So I think, yeah, definitely um, research and development into that. Um, it'll be a collective effort. It's not something that will happen overnight, but um, it's a long-term strategy. But I think that we need to start now. Sure. Thank you. You, Sajinda? Uh, so I believe there is this article by Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which talks about uh, the number of users of the clothes have reduced uh, from 2006, uh, which was 35 times on an average you would wear an item, to in 2016, it is now uh, seven items, 2016 or 18, I believe. Uh, so as consumers, the first step we can do is to invest in better quality pieces, which will last you longer so that you don't have to think about uh, you know, how or where it ends up, uh, make it last longer, style it in different ways, wear it more often and frequently. Uh, as consumers, that is one thing that we can do. Uh, and second, I would just ask us to also be aware. I feel like when we're talking about recycling, there's a lot of awareness of where plastic goes or there are seven types of plastics that need to be recycled. Uh, there is aluminum cans that you can recycle and glass recycling. So we segregate those kind of waste, but we often miss out textile waste as part of the dry waste problem. Uh, so I would encourage us consumers to also bring in that awareness that textile waste is also a kind of waste and where it goes. Uh, ask in your local communities, there are some brilliant brands across the world working on this solution, uh, but they don't have access or, uh, you know, like um, maybe the funds to get the word out there and scream as loudly as the fashion brands do. Uh, so just research, make uh, fashion a high involvement purchase decision rather than a low involvement purchase purchase decision. Uh, so put in the same amount of effort and interest as you would when you're purchasing your mobile phone or a car. Um, and I think you will learn a lot about the kinds of brands uh, that you are purchasing from. Uh, also, you'll learn about what they do at the end of the life cycle and where you can find the uh, closest resource. But I absolutely agree and resonate with Nina that uh, research needs to happen in recycling because that is not a perfect solution yet. Even in India, when we talk about textile recycling, there are some people researching on what can be done with the poly blends, uh, but only cotton is a material that we have successfully recycled so far. Uh, so again, be mindful of the composition of your garments when you're buying 
trying, like I said, make it a high involvement decision, you know, so really figure out what material and fabric are you buying? Is it recyclable? What happens at the end of its life cycle? I think we can just become conscious consumers in those terms. Thank you for sharing those views. Now I'll come to Indina again uh, with a specific question for you. Um, in one of your articles, you recommended that Commonwealth government can introduce a tax on fast, uh, fast fashion items in Australian market. Mm -hmm. um, according to your thoughts, on I mean, how will this be perceived by uh, the consumer positively in an already inflated market? Yeah, so <clears throat> in an already inflated market, yeah, where consumers are concerned, I understand the concerns with taxing fast fashion, particularly, you know, where in Australia, for instance, we have a cost of living crisis. Um, so people are not happy with that. However, uh, what we say to consumers is that there are alternative options. Fast fashion is not the only option. You know, people need to get into the habit of, you know, like we've mentioned a million times already in this webinar, uh, extending the life of your garments for as long as possible, but also buying secondhand, you know, um, reusing, re restyling. Restyling is the art of using one garment in multiple ways, sometimes five or even 10 different ways through layering and accessorizing for different types of occasions, right? Um, so you have a plain black dress, if you wear it with like maybe pearls, a plain black dress that you wear to the office, for instance, right? If you work in an office, but then if you take that same black dress and you put it with pearls and a clutch purse and a pair of heels, you can wear it on a night out or to a wedding. If you're going to a wedding, you don't need to buy a brand new dress. Just take that same dress that you wear to work, casual, you know, sort of casually and just put some accessories with it and change the look. That's a, a way to reduce fashion waste. Right. And it, this is these are restyling is using materials that are already in your wardrobe. So you don't really need to buy more, you know, putting a hat on something depending on the kind of hat completely changes the look. You can wear a, a baseball hat um, is very different from like a Panama hat or Federer right? Two completely different styles. So that's something people can do. Um, so clothes swaps, I've been hosting clothes swaps for close to 14 years. It's a the most easy way to get secondhand, well, new to you clothes uh, for free. So one of the things I'm advocating for here in Australia is to systemize clothes swapping. So clothes swap is where, you know, we all have clothes that we have that we no longer need. They're in good condition. So you bring it to this clothes swap event. It could be five, it could be 10 materials, however many um, that the guidelines stipulate. And everybody does this. And basically you just shop for free. So you're taking home other people's garments that are in good condition that you know they no longer need. And they are taking home yours. You, you know, you're just shopping for free. And this reduces the waste in terms of these are clothes that you probably would have bought brand new. So now imagine, take this clothes swap concept. Imagine if we did it in schools. Every school had, you know, either a designated room or warehouse where when parents, when children grow out of their clothing, which they do every few months because it's the nature of childhood, they take those good quality clothes to this room or warehouse where other parents, as the children are also growing up, um, can go back and exchange clothes, right? So there's so many systems that we can implement. Fast fashion is not the solution. Ultra fast fashion is not the ultimate solution. There's a lot that we can do in our communities, in our schools, in our municipalities, in our offices, in our businesses, in our neighborhoods um, to collectively reduce waste. And it doesn't have to just be with clothing. It could be household items. It could be garden, uh, you know, um, house plants. It could be things we have, you know, uh, plates, Things we use, furniture, things we use in a home as well. It doesn't just books. Um, and again, this is all about reducing waste and giving something in the spirit of generosity, in the spirit of community, in the spirit of sharing, cultivate new systems where we don't always have to buy stuff all the time. Yeah, no, I do understand. And uh, thank you for that piece of advice. I think this is very meaningful and helpful for all, all our uh, viewers and audience over here. Um, Moving on to Sanjana, uh, my question to you is, what challenges did you face to answer the mindset of people that many have? Uh, why should I spend so much on a used one, rather buy a new one? If you can share any experience through your journey so far. Absolutely. So uh, when we were, 
starting out at the initial outset stages when we were just doing con consumer research now this is where intersectionality also comes into play because the indian dynamic uh, the indian population is quite dynamic in certain ways we have our own social issues as well which also play a role into this so uh, when we started collections uh, and we asked consumers that would you be willing to donate or would you be willing to declutter with us responsibly uh, we got all range of responses and when we asked would you thrift uh, so other than the common concerns which are global like hygiene and how do i be assured of the quality and the uh, and the brand uh, we also had to deal with issues such as uh, you know i'm not sure if the person who has donated is from a lower cast so i'm not very convinced to buy it because uh, for those who don't know india also has a caste system which is quite uh, rigid in its way and that complicates certain social solutions that we're trying to bring about as well uh, so we, we we faced all kinds of uh, you know public consumption or mindset challenges that uh, we're not sure where you are sourcing from even if it's individuals even if it's affluent individuals or individuals from the same economic background the social background was a barrier for them to purchase or to you know be a part of this initiative uh one thing we did again this is something that i believe uh works in in building a community we have been very transparent and instead of you know questioning that oh how could you hold such a belief in today's you know 21st century uh we try to understand how that would affect their enjoyment of the garment or affect their acceptability of the garment does it change the value does it change the quality and uh we invited them to just come and take a look at uh the clothes that were here and then pick out for themselves what they thought was being you know given by a certain caste or community and they couldn't because you really can't tell those differences uh so building that trust and transparency through open communication and dialogue and uh instead of you know shutting down questions that we were getting we actually encourage people to be a part of the process that you know come and see how we do things and then tell us what value you would ascertain to it uh, again talking about it for us it was very important to run a socially responsible business as well so we pay above the market rate in our entire value chain uh, so whether it is textile waste workers that we work with for segregation and sorting uh, or it is our vendors or women who are working to create our upcycle product range uh, because we understand that salvaging and reclaiming takes more time and effort and energy it is labor intensive we do pay them uh, better than the market rate that which was important to us because if we can't solve a fashion industry problem which is built on exploitation by further you know exploiting labor so uh, we try to pass on that uh, ideology to our consumers as well which has worked in our benefit for sure like uh, consumers are very willing to listen and learn uh, the problem is they probably wouldn't take the pains of going and doing this research on their own uh, but once you tell them they also reflect and uh, Yeah I think I have just a lot of faith in uh you know people if they are given the right information they would do the right thing with it. Yeah sure I mean uh, thank you for sharing that experience and I completely agree with you. Times are changing and so should uh, so should the people be changing also. Um just before I ask for the questions I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about our project at Thrive. We have a very interesting science a citizen science project on water conservation which is called Be a Water Hero the urban water solutions. For anyone residing in Australia it's open for them to participate and be a part of this change do register your interest through the link given in the chat uh, so uh, thank you very much that was little bit of marketing <laughs> uh, now coming back to the question um, i uh, because we are running short of time i'll quickly ask um, uh, one question i have merged two questions together which has been asked by our viewers uh one of the viewer said that uh, asked that uh interest that person is interested to know how one can choose the right eco friendly source of print on demand types of business uh clothes like etsy printify etc and what par parameters one should consider adding on to this question uh, uh another viewer asked that ethical brands tend to be more expensive how they can be more affordable products uh by them while maintaining their values thank you anyone can answer for us uh okay so print on demand it's actually a good solution if i can because then you are not mass 
producing or you know keeping things ready in bulk that is a good solution i would definitely encourage you to find people who work with natural dyes and with natural uh pigments uh, rather than you know like the chemical dyes and chemical pigments that are quite common in use uh, so maybe that is one thing you can look at you should also feel free to ask about uh, the supply chain of your uh, suppliers as well uh, i think that is one thing in business in trying to optimize our bottom line we have stopped that as a practice of you know doing a thorough vetting or just checking uh, where your sources are coming from so just to make sure that uh, you are uh, sourcing correctly your supplier should also be sourcing correctly uh, that is one thing i would encourage you to do uh, and karan if i can ask you to repeat the second question uh, the ethical brands how they can be more affordable for larger uh, larger population uh, while so they maintain their is, values yeah, okay this is this is for me it's a little uh like a two edged sword because um okay uh, as i think this was thoroughly covered in nina's presentation okay. right talking about how fast fashion uh, is has disrupted the market it has devalued fashion in our head uh that you know fashion should be cheap and affordable but that's not true imagine the whole supply chain of the fashion and how it is coming to your doorstep or in your closet it is not supposed to be cheap if everyone is paid an ethical wage uh so ethical brands that are trying to change that to shift that and mass uh, acceptance of those brands make that the norm make that the demand that you know uh, people would want to purchase from uh, ethical brands and that can help us lower the prices but because ethical brands are working in smaller batches and smaller numbers that obviously drives up the cost because we're not able to optimize on economies of scale right so uh, one thing as a consumer you can do is advocate and adopt those brands into everyday practices but uh, to be honest also shift our perception that things are supposed to be that cheap if like i said at the beginning of my presentation if you are not paying for it someone else is in mm. terms of exploitation or labor um right but nina i would love to hear your inputs on this as well yeah sure your quick thoughts please okay yeah i'll start with the second question um how can ethical brands maintain their their ethics to be honest with you there from my what i can see they're not really being able to stay afloat i in here in australia we've had quite a number of ethical brands closed in the last 12 months closed down because they just can't keep up they can't compete um Shein and Temu collectively these two brands are projected to make over 2 billion dollars in sales in Australia this year so it's not surprising um i think it, the brands have you know they're doing the right thing but we, we they need more support from consumers you know when you i've seen so many consumer surveys that where you know, where people say they're happy to support ethical brands but when it comes to actually doing it voting with their dollars with their money they don't they end up going for the cheaper stuff so um i think this is where we need legislation and policy um and to support ethical brands so whether it's through procurement um you know government policies that you know emphasize procurement um uh you know tax incentives and breaks and things like that to to support these ethical brands because otherwise they can't stay afloat or they change to the dark side where they start using for manufacturing in the wrong ways right um so sorry that that's yeah that's that's just what i can say policy legislation i i think the way we get there is through people advocating for it it's well and good when we do make change in our own personal lives but at with the looming climate crisis with the levels of waste that we have in the world we can't wait anymore for everybody to understand these issues and to make a decision and decide that they're going to change their lifestyle because there are 8 billion of us how long are we going to wait for 8 billion people to learn about the issues of fashion and change their ways right we need policy now you know and i think those of us who are aware and understand we need to push with our political representatives um to make this shift happen we need to advocate in any which way we can whether it's through you know posting on social media educating more people talking to the people in your environment your friends colleagues family about these issues and getting them on board finding petitions that you can even if it's just signing a petition whatever it is that we can do to create more awareness and education towards policy change i think that's where uh we need to be we need to be heading and we need to put our attention towards right um thank you for all those thoughts uh 
Well, we are running short of time, as I mentioned before, and this restricts me to ask any further questions. I know um, our viewers and um, me personally was enjoying this session quite much, but I would request our speakers to answer them offline, uh, for the all the other questions, and for our viewers to sign up our newsletter to get access to these Q&As and latest updates. Uh, with that, thank you very much uh, for your time.